What's up everybody, it's Andy here and welcome to my Game Week 6 preview for FPL. This is a weekly video where I take a look at my team, let you know what transfers I'm thinking of making, which players am I looking at potentially taking out or bringing in, uh, and also finish with who I'm captaining for this week. So we're just going to jump straight into this one. There's a lot of talk to talk about, especially a man named Sergio Aguero. So let's just take a look at my team and I'll let you know whether I'm thinking of bringing him in. So this is my team currently for this week. Um, if you watch my review for Game Week 5, I'm currently ranked 829,863. Pretty poor, but there are 5 million players, um, so it's not the end of the world this early in the season. I don't like it, but it can only get better, I hope. So, one free transfer going into Game Week 6. Um, what I'll do is I'll quickly run through my team as it is now, because I think I could potentially get away with making no transfers this week, but there are a couple of things I'm thinking about doing, so... I'll run through the team really quick and who I'm thinking about getting rid of, who I'm not. So Elliot's got Brighton away. I will never bet on Brighton scoring goals. Yes, they've got Gross there, looks okay. But as a general rule, I don't think Brighton are going to score many goals. So I'm happy with Elliot in goal, especially ahead of Foster, who's got um, Arsenal away. And I'm expecting Arsenal to score goals in that game. So definitely don't want to play Foster even for the save points. At the back, I've got Davies. Obviously, he was benched last week. Apparently had a knock. Why he was on the bench, I don't know if he had a knock, but there we go. I think he's going to start this week. Um, I don't think really Pochettino until Rose gets back can afford to leave him out. Yes, they've got other options they could bring in, but they're not as good as uh, as Davies. Not only is he a good defender, he also creates a lot going forward. So he's obviously going to play West Ham away. Sutner, um, I think Newcastle Brighton could be nil nil. Now maybe I think that because I got two of their defenders, but. Brighton generally are fairly defensive, not really attacking. And Newcastle are pretty good uh, defensive-wise. So I think Newcastle will be the team more to attack. Um, but that could quite easily up as a nil-nil. So I'm a bit worried about Atsu this week. But it's only 5 million, so not expecting returns every week. And if this week's the one where he blanks, then so be it. If he comes away with three points, it's not the end of the world. And I've got Kyle Norton. Came off the bench for me last week. Uh, home to Watford. Watford will look pretty good going forward. It's not quite clicked yet. Um, players like Richarlison are doing all right, but um, haven't got any attacking returns since the first two game weeks. But I think Swansea generally are looking for clean sheets. If I could swap now, I'd probably take Fernandez, who's got better bonus point potential, and now Norton's not playing right back. Uh, sorry, right wing back. Maybe not as good as an attacking threat, but clean sheets are all worth six points no matter what defender you've got. So hopefully you can get one against Watford. Midfield wise, I was thinking about um, wild cards a potential option this week. Uh, and I might talk about the team I'd go for. But midfield-wise, I'm not sure I'd change anything. I'd probably bring in Loftus-Cheek. Even though he's got three annoying, uh, you know, not annoying, but difficult fixtures coming up in the next three game weeks. I think he's probably the 4.5 million midfielder to have. But for the other four, I just I need Atsu to, to um, enable me the rest of my team. And then Mkhitaryan, Salah and Eriksen just keep getting points. And I just don't have any reason to get rid of them. There's not really any other options that I think are better that are even cheaper. Maybe David Silva is an option. But right now I'm happy with those three. They keep getting points. So they're all in my team. All going to play. Not captainable, I don't think. Um, or at least I don't want to captain them. But they're all in my team. I'm really just not looking to get rid of them at all. And then up front, we've got Firmino. Yes, didn't start very well against Burnley. We knew that could be a tricky fixture. They haven't got Mane, which is always a problem for Liverpool. But I think against Leicester, they're more likely to attack than Burnley are. So hopefully Liverpool can try and play them at their own game. I think that would be quite an open uh, an open fixture. And I think Firmino looks good there. Good for bonus, good for assists. And hopefully good for goals and should still be on penalties. So I, I, I still got a bit of faith in him. If I could go back and do the transfer again, I would probably bring in Jocelyn, even though he got no points last week. I just think that would let me beef up my defence a bit more. But can't worry about the pass too much. We're looking forward. So Firmino, good pick. Uh, good pick. And then it's Kane and Jesus. Now, Kane blanked again against Swansea. Um, he's not getting the you know the really good chances like Jesus and Aguero and Lukaku are. Will Spurs click? Will he suddenly get a load of goals? I mean, he scored two against Dortmund, two against Everton. He's a quality striker. He is going to score goals. The problem is, how long do we wait for him to score those goals? Now, I, I sometimes play this game with a bit of fear, and I'm sure a lot of FPL managers do. My worry isn't that I bring in Aguero and he gets me loads of points. My worry is that I take out Kane, and he scores a hat-trick, and then I want him back. Now, historically, they've not got a great record against West Ham. Reed's also back in that defence, so it does make Kane a, probably a slightly worse option this week. I think for my team, I have to back the team that have scored like 11 goals in the last two games, Man City, against a Crystal Palace side that are poor, but, again, Roy Hodgson's come in, should make him better defensively. At least that's the uh, kind of narrative. But also, Sacco is back for Crystal Palace, which is really going to help uh, their defensive returns. So, right now I'm captaining Jesus, mainly because 
I don't fancy captain any of my midfielders. Um, and I just think he's probably the better option than Kane. Now, the problem is, if you're looking at getting a Man City player in, Jesus keeps going off like after 60... Doesn't barely even get to 70 minutes. So he's got to get all your points and all your captain points um, in the first sort of 60 minutes. Otherwise, he's no good. Now, I'm recording this on Tuesday night. I probably I don't know if I'm going to make it live tonight or, or kind of Wednesday at 6 p.m. Either way, I've not seen the rest of the League Cup games. And, you know, Man City may give us a big indication of what's about to come because there's rumours, not rumours maybe, but worry in the kind of FPL community that one of Jesus or, or more likely Aguero will get rested. But if Jesus plays midweek in the Cup and Aguero doesn't, then there's obviously no worry about Aguero playing in the league. So, coming on to that, that's my team as it is, transfer-wise. Uh, so, I'm going to captain Jesus, like I say. Now, I could wildcard. If I wildcarded, this is what I would do. My front three would all go. I'd go Aguero and Lukaku. I think Aguero just looks in good form. They've got three really great fixtures coming up in the next four. Chelsea away is the only bad one. But David Luiz is out injured now, so it gets slightly better for them, I think. Plus, Aguero is kind of a big game player. So, if, if you're going to bet on anyone to score, probably him or Kane in a big game. So, I go Aguero. Lukaku, yes, I got rid of him. It was a mistake. Uh, I think their fixtures are okay. Man United, even, even after Crystal Palace. But in game week seven, Lukaku looks to be the best captain option. Kane's got Huddersfield away. Uh, Man City have got... Um, Chelsea away, like I just said. So, I think Lukaku is the best captain option. And then I'd probably get Josselu. And I know that's kind of the reverse of what I was thinking last week, but he would enable me to get a better defence. And then I'd change my defence and I'd just have Davies, Kalasinac, Phil Jones would be my main three. And I'd make sure the other two players were starting four and a half million defenders. So uh, probably someone like Ben Mee um, at Burnley and Wimmer at Stoke. But all I'm doing then is changing a few defenders. And yes, my entire strike force, but I don't think my current strike force desperately needs changing. So I'm not looking to wildcard, mainly because my midfield would just not change. And that feels like a bit of a waste. I'm waiting for kind of... I'm almost waiting for injuries in my team right now. So, the wild card's off the table. The bigger question is, do I get Aguero in? Now, I'm not worried about doubling up on Man City. I'm not worried about coverage. To me, whether or not I've got Jesus does not matter about how many points Aguero's going to score. If Aguero's going to get a hat-trick, whether I've got Jesus or not doesn't really matter. Now, if I could do Jesus to Aguero, that's a different story. I can't, not for free. It's not worth a hit, for sure. I think it's too, too much of a sideways move. Do I think there's merit in getting rid of another big hitter to bring in Lukaku? Uh, to bring in Aguero? If you've got Lukaku, I don't think you do it. Um, I think he can score just as well as Aguero over the next two. Remember that Aguero's big pull is that he's got Crystal Palace at home next. Lukaku has that fixture in game week seven. And he's probably the most obvious captain. Whereas this week, you could potentially get away with Kane, Kane or Lukaku instead of Aguero. So, I don't think you take out Lukaku for Aguero. I think if you do anything, you take out Kane. Now, over the next four fixtures, City have got three really good home ones. Uh, I can't remember the third one, but it's Stoke and Crystal Palace, and then obviously Chelsea away, plus another good home fixture. So I think Kane could do the business there. Uh, sorry, Aguero could do the business there, and he's possibly captainable in three out of the next four fixtures. Plus, he's free up one million. So it would take... I'd always say it'd take balls to get rid of Kane for Aguero because you've always got that fear factor that Kane is going to go big. But it is an option for me. Now, if I did that, that would free up enough money to do Jesus to Lukaku, which I wouldn't do this week, but I could do it the week after. So, Kane to Aguero this week, Captain Aguero for sure, and then do Jesus to Lukaku in game week seven. And I've got the same front two without getting rid of Firmino um, and without using my wild card. But the problem is, I then can't make, without a hit, any moves in my defence. So, Sutton yes is okay this week, but long-term is not great. Um, Daniels has got Leicester at home next week, which is okay to play him in. But I don't really want to do that. And do I want to use two transfers to get rid of Kane and bring in Lukaku? I'm not sure it's worth it. So, potential... Um, I'm not, I'm not going to decide on my transfer in this video, unfortunately, because I just don't want to do it this early. Um, in fact, I'd like to know in the comments below, do you like how early do you want this video out? I, I like it out early so I can get my thoughts across and let you know what I'm kind of thinking about. Most of the time, I've got the transfer in my head, and I'll say to you, realistically, this is what I'm going to do. Um, but obviously, I like to wait till as late as possible to get as much news as possible, either injury news in the press conferences, or see what's happening in the Carlin Cup, etc. But, I could do Kane to Aguero, and then Jesus to Lukaku in game week 7. That would be an aggressive move. It would be a risky move to get rid of Kane, but he hasn't been doing the business, right? Um, you know, big chances-wise, which are a bit like expected goals, they're the really quality chances. Kane has had less than both Jesus and Aguero. Not, not both between them, but both each. Um, so it doesn't look that good. 
right now. He obviously hit the bar in the last game. Could have had a penalty. It could have been all different, but it wasn't. We say, what if Kane's hit the bar a few times? So's Gabbiadini. We don't suddenly want Gabbiadini in goal. Uh, not in goal, sorry. In front of goal. So, yes, I could do Kane to Aguero, Jesus to Lukaku. I won't repeat that again. But more realistically, I'm going to use my transfer to make a defensive change. Now, I could hold my transfer and play Sutner and Norton, but I'm not too sure about Sutner long term. So I'm probably going to get him on my bench for now and do Charlie Daniels to Phil Jones for free. Now, Phil Jones, I think, with Matic behind... Uh, oh, sorry, in front of the defence and De Gea behind it. I mean, arguably, De Gea is the best goalkeeper in the world. I just think we've got a solid defence there. Phil Jones looks good. He's 5.1 million. Hasn't gone up to the 5.2 yet. Um, Southampton away. Southampton can't score. I think the defensive options after Man United are still okay to bring in or to have. But um, attacking-wise, they just don't look good. So Phil Jones, I think that's a clean sheet there. I think there's a clean sheet against Crystal Palace as well. And generally, Man United are not going to concede many goals. They were one of the best defences last year as well. So realistic transfer is going to be Daniels to Jones. Um, I won't bank it. I won't bank a free transfer. And I won't um, I won't take a hit this week, I don't think. So it'll be Phil Jones in for Daniels. Obviously, Daniels is on my bench currently. I would just bench Sutner instead and play Norton Davies and Phil Jones. And I think that's a pretty solid team. Again, the Warriors always there that Aguero, Morata, Lukaku, Lacazette even with good fixtures for Arsenal will do the damage. But at the end of the day, you can't have them all. It's tough to fit them all in. So I think I'm going to go with what's on the screen, apart from Daniels to Jones, and play him. And that is my team for this week. Um, the only other player that I really want this week that I don't have, if you're thinking of bringing him in, is Kalasanac. I think with two really good home fixtures, he's going to get points attacking and defensively. I think Arsenal sometimes don't look the best uh, in defence for clean sheets, but... I think fixtures do bring clean sheets to teams, and they've got they got two really nice ones, starting with West Brom at home. So that's me for this week. Let me know in the comments below what you think of my team, what you think of my ideas. Is getting Kane out for Aguero too much of a risk, or do you think is a good move? Let me know what you think of these videos. I like getting them out as early as possible to give people as much time as possible to watch them and comment. Um, but obviously, I have the least amount of news, so I can't guarantee what I'm going to do. But like this week, I'm pretty sure I'm going to do Daniels to Jones. It's a very boring move, but I feel like it's the right move for my team. And I've still got that wild card, which I'm probably going to use around game week 8. But again, it will depend on how many injuries and stuff I've got. Because right now, I don't want to change my midfield. So, I'll leave it there because I feel like I'm probably repeating myself at this point. Comment down below about anything, really. But what you think of my team? What are you doing with your team? Are you bringing Aguero? Is Aguero essential? That seems to be the big question this week. I feel like I've talked about it enough. For me, he's not essential, but he's a damn good option this week. Um, you should definitely consider bringing him in. But not for Lukaku, in my opinion. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed, hit the subscription button, hit the bell. That'll let you know when my next video goes live. I've been pretty consistent recently. i um, doing a review and a preview short, like kind of short form video. Uh, and then a live stream at the end of the game week and at the beginning of the game week. So next live stream will be Thursday this week where I'll answer your questions. Um, and we'll go from there. Um, otherwise, I think that's it for me. Um, like, comment, share, tweet me, retweet, all that good stuff. Subscribe, but most of all, watch the videos. And uh, good luck in game week six. Cheers for watching all.